Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel and a very happy 2024. Here's to the first video of the year and thank you to everybody watching. We wish you a happy, healthy and prosperous new year. In this week's video, set on a rolling lawn that's dotted with ancient trees, the atmospheric Netley Abbey exudes romance, grandeur, mystery and a certain kind of eeriness all at once. One of the highly treasured Cistercian landmarks in southern England, this medieval abbey is home to traces of an ancient church, remains of Tudor houses and an idyllic cloister. So join us as we discover Netley Abbey. Netley Abbey is one of Hampshire's most well-known abbeys. It's a magnificent religious relic that will be etched in history for centuries and beyond. The abbey itself is a ruined late medieval monastery in the village of Netley that is near to the large port city of Southampton in Hampshire. The abbey was founded in 1239 as a house for monks of the austere Cistercian order. Despite its royal patronage, Netley was actually never a rich abbey. It produced no influential scholars or churchmen and it had a period of over 300 years without conflict or disputes. The monks that lived and worked here were best known to their neighbours for their generosity and their hospitality that they offered to travellers both on land and sea. Netley's foundation started with Peter de Roche, the Bishop of Winchester from 1205 until his death in 1238. The very large open space south of the church is the cloister that is surrounded by ranges of buildings on three sides. The cloister is where the monks spent most of their time when they weren't bound to the church. They were able to use the cloister and its buildings to study, copy books and create illuminated manuscripts. The Eastern Range, which started at the same time as the church and more than likely took around 10 years to build, contained many of the Abbey's most important rooms. This included the vaulted library and sacristy that were on the ground floor adjacent to the church. To the south was the chapter house, where all of the deliberations of the Abbey took place. Monks were made to meet here to transact business and to listen to a daily reading of the rule of St Benedict. At Netley, this was a magnificent apartment that was divided in, up into three aisles, with vaults springing from four columns, where a stone bench ran across the walls for the monks to sit on, and the abbot's throne was in the centre of the eastern wall. The entrance inside the chapter house from the cloister is through an elaborately moulded arched doorway, with windows on either side, the chapter house was also the site of some of the tombs, traditionally those of the abbots of the monastery. When the room was excavated, archaeologists discovered scattered human remains and evidence of graves beneath the medieval floor level, indicating that of a number of burials. The abbey itself was one of a pair of monasteries in which the bishop intended as a memorial to himself. The other abbey was in France. De Roche began to purchase the lands for Netley's initial endowment, but he died before the project could be finished, and the foundation was completed by his executors. The first monks that arrived to settle the site on the 25th of July in 1239 came from the neighbouring Bewley Abbey. The fact that its founder died before dedication of the endowment was complete, put the abbey in direct financial difficulty. It is thought that only after the house was taken under the wing of Henry III, who became interested in it around the mid-1240s, had any other progress been made to the buildings. The king, Henry III, eventually assumed the role of patron in 1251, bringing great wealth and status to the abbey. The dissolution of the monasteries under Henry VIII brought monastic life at Netley to an end. 
Following its seizure in 1536, the buildings were granted to Sir William Paulet, a local Tudor politician who later converted them into a mansion. The abbey was used as a country house up until the early 18th century, after which it was abandoned. At this time, much of the brickwork was added by William. It was removed to be used for building materials. The site then fell into neglect, becoming overgrown with trees and ivory. In time, the site came to be celebrated as a romantic ruin, eventually becoming a tourist attraction and providing great inspiration to writers and artists of the Romantic movement, including John Constable and Thomas Gray. The latter wrote that they are not the ruins of Netley, but of paradise. It is also believed that Jane Austen drew inspiration from the Abbey for her gothic parody Northanger Abbey. The West Range at Netley is small and does not run the full length of the west side of the cloister. It is divided into two by the original main entrance to the Abbey, with an outer parlour where the monks could meet their visitors. North of this, on the ground floor, were cellars for food storage, and to the south was the Lay Brothers Refectory. The upper floor, reached by a stair from the cloister, was a dormitory for the Lay Brothers. Netley was a late foundation, built at the time when the Lay Brothers were a declining part of the Cistercian economy, and it is probable that there were fewer in number, hence the small size of the accommodation that was needed. By the time the West Range was completed in the 14th century, they were rapidly disappearing and had all but vanished by the end of the century. During the late 14th and 15th centuries, most Cistercian houses took advantage of the large area of the monastery, then left empty and converted lay brothers' quarters to new uses. The wealth and prosperity from the royal patronage at the Abbey was shown and demonstrated in the construction of this large and beautiful church. At 72 metres long and built in the fashionable French influence Gothic style, pioneered by Henry's Masons at Westminster. The high quality in work and the elaborate nature of the church's decoration, particularly in its mouldings and tracery, just indicate further how much they wanted to show off and how much was spent just on the church itself. Taking many decades to actually complete, the church was probably finished between 1290 and 1320. The interior of the church was richly decorated. All we see now is chalky stone walls, but picture this. The walls were once plastered and painted in white and maroon, with geometric patterns and lines designed to give an impression of ashlar masonry. The detailing would be picked out in the maroon colour and the floors would have been covered in polychrome tiles featuring foliage, heraldic beasts and coats of arms, including those of England, France, the Holy Roman Empire, Richard of Cornwall and many other powerful noble families of the time. The windows of the church were also filled with painted glass, showing scenes from the life of the Virgin Mary, the crucifixion, monks, monsters and humorous animals. It just would have been spectacular. So far, excavations have not revealed or found whether Netley had a separate infirmary complex. The upper floor of this building was the latrine, a large room with a door conveniently led into the monk's dormitory. To the west of the latrine block was the buttery, which was a room where the monk's wine and beer were stored. Some of the wine here was actually from the king's cellars at Southampton. Some more excavations revealed broken remains of what is thought to be parts of a separate kitchen, which would make sense for a richer diet that was allowed to the residents of the infirmary. 
for they were to enjoy hot meat dishes filled with nutrition rather than the strict Cistercian vegetarian diet that the monks were made to eat. A stone building set to the east of the main complex is thought to have been the abbot's house. It contains two levels of vaulted apartments, which house two halls, bedchambers, a private chapel and service rooms. The upper level would have once been reached by an internal staircase that would have allowed his floor to be used independently if need be. I have to say the eeriness that people speak of when visiting Netley Abbey really does hit you whilst you walk around this particular part of the abbey site. What's fitting here is the folklore and legends that spook through these stone walls. Firstly, there are talks of an old curse that's in existence that would occur to anybody trying to locate this or who might be inclined to disturb the abbey ruins. Yet, legend has it that somebody who seemingly chose this deal with the devil was a Victorian land developer called Walter Taylor who brought the land rights to Netley and proceeded with the demolition of the abbey on the promise of a handsome profit. After making this agreement, however, Taylor dreamed that as he was pulling down a particular window, one of the stones forming the arch fell upon him and killed him. Taylor abandoned the project prematurely due to those dreams of awful things happening to him, if he dared touch a stone. However, just days after, Taylor and one of his workmen were working on the window and the window arch slipped and fell on his head. He was critically injured by a piece of falling masonry, which had managed to lodge itself dangerously close to his brain. He later died under surgery and it could have been proof that his death wasn't an accident, but the Abbey's deadly curse. The grounds themselves are free to visit and generally open all year round, so it's perfect for those who want to visit late in the evening for some paranormal investigating, or during the day, as it's the perfect place for also a relaxing walk, take the dog out, or just to see some history and enjoy the outdoors. The ruins really do speak for themselves. Come explore and see on some of the walls the people from our past, carving their initials into the stones to their dates of their visit. So if you've enjoyed our video, please hit the like button. Consider clicking the subscribe button and bell to never miss another video. And please leave us a comment and tell us what you think of Netley Abbey. We've got some really exciting things coming. And if you want to know and see first, why not join us here as channel members or on our Patreon page? All of the links are down in our description. Thank you so much for watching. So we'll see you in the next one. Till next time.